Hi, this is not a very good hunting channel. Um, just want to do a quick video today. Uh, I picked up a new jacket and uh, I'm going to give a quick uh, kind of first impression of it. Uh, I haven't got a chance to uh, use it very much, so uh, you know, don't uh, hold me to uh, a final review until I get a, a few more chances to try it out. But I picked it up for uh, pretty pretty cheap, so I wanted to uh, you know give a uh, give my first impressions to uh, to you guys to see if maybe this is something that you uh, might think of picking up yourself. So stick around, and uh, we'll take a look. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to make this fairly quick because, like I said, I really haven't had this jacket uh, for very long, and I haven't done much, um, you know, uh, real-world testing with it. Um, it's about, well, it's a little bit warmer now. I got the heater going uh, at the camp uh, just because uh, my fingers were getting cold this morning. It was about minus 6 uh, Celsius. And uh, so I was using this jacket outside while I was bringing stuff in, and it's pretty damn warm. Um, uh, also, when I was packing stuff into the camp and just hanging around, I didn't have the heater going. I was just hanging out in the jacket, and uh, it was it was good and warm. Right now, I have the. Uh, what do you call it? The Celsius Midi uh, jacket inside, and I have a vest on. Uh, this is overkill. I just, um, I just wanted to be, you know, extra warm right away when I got here because I had hadn't planned on doing the uh, the heater, but my hands were getting cold. So, um, yeah. So, you know, uh, it's easy to say that oh, it's a warm jacket because you're sitting here next to a heater, but. It was warm outside as well when it was cold this morning at minus six, uh, and I didn't have the uh, the Celsius media under under it. I was just wearing a t-shirt, like just wearing a regular t-shirt, and then this uh, this Ain Fad jacket. So, uh, yeah, forgive me if I'm going to be all over the place here, but um, so this is the company that makes this is called Ain Fad. Um, so you can get them off uh, AliExpress, and I know a lot of people are hesitant about using AliExpress because it's, I guess it's like the Chinese eBay or something like that, but um, I've gotten a few things off of it, and uh, so what originally happened was I was gifted one of these, um, this one. I was gifted this one uh, for Christmas, uh, but it was a large, uh, which I normally take, especially in, I know, for the Sitka gear that I'm wearing, it's uh, it's a large and it fits great. That was a bit tight, um, so the person who gave it to me uh, let me know where they got it, and so I looked, uh, I mean, obviously, I guess returns is a pain in the butt. I can, I'm still going to use that, I just won't be using it when... I'm going to be layering more stuff underneath. Um, but yeah, so looking up on uh, AliExpress and uh, I uh, decided to go with an extra large. So the one I'm currently wearing is an extra large. And yeah, these things, um, 
they go on sale every now and then but it's like i think a regular price is like 160 and then shipping is like uh, you know 180 or something like that uh canadian um i don't know what happened to luck out that when i happened to be looking i was able to find this extra large um for like 66 bucks um and then shipping was like 30 so it's like you know less than 100 bucks and i'm not gonna take this one off i guess i can well here i'll just i'll show you um so i don't have much to reference uh sorry to compare the two like the uh incinerator aerolite uh from sitka and uh this guy from main fat um but obviously when you look on on their website or their storefront on aliexpress you can see they you know they uh they have the pictures like right off the sitka website it looks like the same stuff so um so now I'm I'm pretty sure that the fabric is not the same. Um, I was always told that the um, incinerator is a louder fabric than the um, the fanatic, uh, which I have here. Uh, so I can't give a straight up comparison between these jackets and a, and a Aerolite uh, incinerator, but. I can't compare it to the Fanatic. And so, the outer fabric of the Fanatic, like you can see it has like the Berber fleece and stuff. And th this is sold as the silent cold weather gear from Sitka um, for bow hunters and stuff like that, for you know being as quiet as possible uh, for whitetail hunting. So, but for anyone who doesn't know about the Fanatic, it has two outer fabrics. So it has the fleece fabric here. Hear that? And then it has the uh, more like nylon or polyester kind of type face fabric in different locations. And you can hear that. And then the fleece. I'm on it right up to the mic, by the way. So to my ear, it's, it's pretty quiet. Maybe the mic will pick it up louder because I'm holding it right against the fabric, uh, sort of right against the mic. But then the um, incinerator knockoff, I guess I'll call it, or uh, whatever, you can tell it's a lot louder. But it's not too bad. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, Usually, like if, if I find like this type of material, the colder it gets outside, the more crinkly and, and louder it gets. So, you know, me moving around. It's warmed up here a bit. What is it showing? It's showing that it's plus six now. So it's plus six degrees Celsius in, in the camp right now. And it wasn't too much louder than this when it was outside in minus six. Uh, with the wind, it's like minus 11, minus 12. But yeah, so. Um, as far as build quality goes for this, it's, it's pretty damn good. Um, again, I'm not, I don't have a uh, incinerator to compare it, you know, you know, apples to apples to. Um, but I know Sitka, uh, likes to use their Primaloft, um, insulation. So, I'm pretty sure the incinerator uses gold. Could be wrong. It could be silver. Um, Either way, um, so that's the insulation that um, Sitka uses in their incinerator jackets. Uh, same thing, Fanatic. Uh, they use, you know, they still use Primo. This brand uses um, Thinsulate, and I think I was looking up because they make they make several different uh, jackets and stuff and, and products, bibs and things like that. Um, you know copying the, uh, the, Sitka, the Sitka stuff, uh, which I, I have uh, a couple other pieces that I'm, I'm going to be doing reviews on. Um, but yeah, so they use let's see that, the 3M Thinsulate. Um, I think, I want to say it's either 
J or I or E, I don't know. They 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 use a lettering system for, for thin slate insulation. And um, this is like the basic stuff. So the stuff that you'd find in like most thin slate gloves or boots or stuff like that. Um, not entirely sure how much is in these. Um, but like I said, it's it's a pretty damn warm jacket. I was I was surprised. Um, now they claim it's uh, you know waterproof and um, and windproof and stuff like that. So I I don't. It wasn't very windy outside this morning. I didn't notice, but um, it definitely wasn't raining. So I don't know how this is in in the in the rain and or snow to see how how much their um, waterproof claim is. I, I believe they're like Teflon treated. Um, and their multi-layered um, version of Gore-Tex. Um, there's a special acronym, um, which basically is Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex, it's just the, uh, the membranes that uh, allow humidity and sweat to leave, but they don't let water in. Um, EP, TP, something like that. Regardless. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, one thing I will say, um, like my Fanatic, and anyone who has a Fanatic, this has an elastic cuff on the inside of the. Let's see if I can look at it. You can kind of see that. So inside of the sleeve, there's an elastic cuff, and that seals around your wrist to keep the heat in. And on the Fanatic, um, again, I could be wrong, maybe the incinerator, uh, the Sitka incinerator does not have something similar to that, but this is very, very flexible, very soft. Um, it's not really, uh, you know, warm. It's it's just meant to act as a, um, like a seal for, for cold air from getting in. And then the cuff goes around it and it conforms to this shape of your wrist. So. A very cool feature. So, this Ainfad jacket has a similar feature. Um, now, they chose, okay, it's the, uh, they have Velcro cuffs on, on the outside. So, they have the same kind of idea. So, but it's more of, they took the inside liner which is like a uh, polyester or whatever. And then they stitched um, like a fleece cuff to it. And you can see more of the liner in there. So that's that's the inside of the coat that you see. That, you know, like a, like a, a nice winter coat. Um, so yeah, so the, the issue with that is that this isn't very stretchy. It's, it's pretty solid, like it doesn't, flex so if you have a wrist that's bigger than this it's going to be hard to get through this cuff and that was one of the issues i had with the large um i mean i don't have giant hands i have regular size i wear um large gloves for um for all my Sitka gloves anyways um and even then um uh, i tried medium gloves and they're just a bit small. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm like a, a smaller size of a large or the, uh, you know, uh, large is just, just slightly bigger on me where, where the gloves aren't tight, tight, tight on my hands, which is nice, um, but mediums are slightly too small. So anyways, to give you an idea, so for my wrist. So the large in that was um, kind of tight pulling on. Now, this extra large has the same kind of a situation. There's more, there is slightly more room, but not much. Like, um, so, I mean, if Ainfad is looking uh, at this video, um, I would suggest that you either change your fabric um, and add some more elastic to the cuff, um, or just make the cuff slightly bigger because most people wearing this stuff are going to be um, layering anyways. Um, so yeah, so that's the only cuff. Now, the 
inside of the jacket is very nice. Like it's it's nice. It's well made. It um, you know when you when you compare it to an actual uh, Sitka incinerator, they're very 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 similar. Um, now I'm not going to weigh this, but it's it's pretty light. It's pretty packable. You can fold it right down. It's not, I mean, I could do better than that. This is just quick. Um, but compared to the Fanatic jacket, the Fanatic jacket is huge. So for packability, this thing's pretty pretty good. Um, so pockets, I'm pretty sure they have roughly the same kind of pockets that the uh, incinerator has. Um, you can see on the inside, underneath the, uh, you know, underneath the sleeve, they have a big uh, kind of... Uh, mesh pocket that you put your gloves in, your hats, or, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. Um, to tuck in, so just like an incinerator. Um, yeah, it has drawstring on the bottom, uh, around your waist. The, uh, it does have a pass-through for your harness. Um, this is just a generic harness that comes with, uh, you know, full shoe stands. So I will try with this one. I'm assuming it's the same size for all of them. I uh, can't see a large having a smaller uh, pass through than an extra large. I, mean, I can check, but either way, this fits will be all right. So going through the liner, no problem. And then, geez, trying to line up these two holes they really should have it so that it's stitched around so that both holes in the material stay together because you know it's like you're trying to go through this side and this side is moving so you get it through this side and then now I'll, I gotta find the hole over here and go up here so because this shifts the the, the shell and the liner because that shifts around it's kind of hard to get the, uh, the strap through but I mean, it comes to practice, I'm sure. Okay, so, so we got it through the back. Now, I'm at the stitching here where the harness strap is looped, and it is getting really hard to get through this. So yeah, I'm, I'm having a real tough time getting the wider part of the harness through this where the stitching is you can see the stitching coming through and yeah I mean I don't really want to rip this so yeah it's getting stuck pretty good um, so if AIMFAD is watching this um, I would suggest make that opening larger. Um, also, stitch both of them, uh, both the liner and the shell together so that it's not two separate um, pieces that you're fighting against. Okay, so it's back up. All right. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. Put this out of here. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit disappointing. Um, so that's on a large. Like I said, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference between the large and thing. So um, maybe other straps are narrow, more narrow, but that's just a generic strap that's come with. Uh, geez, how many tree stands do I have? Three or four, uh, plus the climbing. System. Yeah, so like. It seems to be like the generic, um, you know, throw-in uh, tree stand uh, harness that they give you with tree stands. So maybe if uh, somebody has like a muddy harness or, um, you know, uh, a separate company that's, you know, a gorilla, um, maybe their harnesses are a bit more narrow and they'll fit through the opening a little bit better. But uh, I wouldn't suggest using that opening. Um, for a, a harness strap um, again because it's just 
we'll see. Just, just light stitching on the outside. So it's not really reinforced all that much. So I'm sure if I, if I forced it through, pulled all those links through um, with all that stitching, it, it'll probably pop this stitching. Um, so yeah, so going back to the jacket, uh, the hood has really nice thick Berber fleece um, in the hood. It has a stiff peak to it. Um, oh here, I'll put it on the hood. And I was sitting in here earlier uh, when I first got in. I had to shovel my, in, my way into the gate to get my truck in. Um, Okay, now I have my Celsius media underneath this, so I have a couple of neck collars. So, so I normally wear a large, and this is an extra large, and the neck is tight, tight, tight. Um, now, saying saying that on my Fanatic, I have the same issue. Uh, the Fanatic is a large, though, and getting with all these collars, so you can see I have the Celsius media, I have a vest underneath. Uh, which is another Einfad product, and then just a crew t-shirt. So with two collars, and then trying to get the uh, collar of the outer jacket up, it's a pain. Um, so odds are that's probably how I'd, how I'd be wearing it like this, and then I'd have my neck gaiter um, for when it's cold. So the hood is not really adjustable. There's no real straps or anything like that. There are buttons. Uh, that you can roll it up and then clip it so that it doesn't flop around back there. You can roll it up, you know, kind of like that and then just clip it to itself uh, to the back of the jacket. So, the, yeah, so it has a chest pockets. Um, and they're, they're big, they go right underneath the armpit. So you can fit uh, stuff in there. Uh, they look to be almost the same kind of sealed type pockets as uh, as the uh, other stuff uh, like I have the Hudson jacket um, from Sitka they have similar similar style uh, bonded uh, zippers um, so kind of like the fanatic this has I'm starting to get hot now I like like to the point where I should probably take some stuff off uh, okay we'll open this in Okay, so, um, like the Fanatic and uh, the pictures I've seen of the incinerator, it has like the range finder pocket and then the grunt tube pocket. Now, compared to the Fanatic, this is just like, you know, a little bit of extra fabric thrown in on top. And then they have the mesh here to let the sound go through. So. You know, like if uh, you got your grunt tube here hanging in. So you have your grunt tube there, then you have the sound. So if you just wanted to lean over, uh. that's basically how that works. Um, now notice up top, they have the, um, like the lanyard lines, like their, like Sitka has on their, um, their waterfowl stuff. Um, but I mean, I know for me, you can just slide that up there and then loop it back through and make, you know, like a, a, a loop. And just basically loop that to this and then you're not going to, even if you fall, it has something to hold on to. So that's a nice feature that they, they took that. I mean, they, let's be honest here, right? Like, they're copying everything that Sitka is doing. Um, so, so those little straps up here, it's nice that they added that to their, the whitetail version of it. Uh, that way you have, you know, a nice uh, lanyard loop so that you don't drop, you're not gonna lose your, your grunt tube if you're up in the tree stand or something like that. So anyways, these are the two pockets. It's similar to the Fanatic and other stuff like that, but obviously the Fanatic, and possibly the uh, the Sitka um, uh, incinerator 
is a little bit more, um, you know, integrated, I guess, what you'd say. Um, so they have the same kind of thing, but it's like, it, it also has a little magnetic clip, and so that opens up, it's even bigger pocket, but, I mean, again, um, anyone who's been shopping for, like, uh, an incinerator from Sitka, <coughs> uh, you can, you know how much it costs up here in Canada, it's like a thousand bucks, like, and if you wanted to get it from the States, um, from Sitka, it's a little bit cheaper, but then you get nailed with, like, massive duties and taxes and stuff once it crosses over the border, um, oh yeah, that's, that's one thing I'll say, um, this, um, because they use FedEx to ship this, I guess because it's fairly large, um, the other stuff that I got, uh, was smaller, so it, the, um, they didn't have it, they didn't send it via FedEx, so they just used, uh, you know, China Post or whatever that came in through the regular mail, and, uh, there was no duties or taxes on those. The, these, uh, this one, I'm, I'm sure, I didn't ask, but I'm sure it did it for that jacket too, because they're both you know, fairly large jackets. So they had a uh, brokerage fees and stuff like that. So the, you know, the hundred dollars turned into like 120, uh, all said and done when I got it on sale. But again, uh, so that would have been just under probably I'd say 200, just under 200, just over 100 compared to a thousand dollars, um, with the genuine Sitka stuff. Uh, yeah. So Bottom line, it it's it's a nice jacket. Um, the camo is very, 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 very close. Like like you can tell that there's slight differences, uh, more of like tone. The pattern is is almost dead on. Uh, there's some, you know, like the edges are sharper in some spots and, and not as sharp as the other one. Uh, this Celsius Mini is not exactly a great example because of the fabric that they print on it is different like through all the all the fabrics and Sitka's like the fleece takes a totally different look with their elevated two uh, compared to you know the other the other part of the elevated two and then this is a totally different fabric so it looks different um, I do have the the GTX, the Incinerator GTX hat, and this fabric, you can hear on my fingers, uh, my hands are dry and rough, um, it's really loud, because I'm, I'm like, kind of picking up the surface with my fingers, so it, it, it scratches a lot more, um, compared to, this is, is smoother. Um, so, in fact, it's quieter than this fabric, uh, with my bare hand anyway, so not that I'm going to be sitting there in minus 10 with my bare hands. Um, yeah, so again, um, you're, oh, now that I'm looking at it, the hood does have a drawstring in the back, and that, that goes to just inside, the draw cord goes inside the brim. Uh, so that's like a stiff piece, well, you know, like a, a cardboard stiffness, I guess. But on the outside of it, that's where the draw cord goes if you want to adjust. And it goes underneath a little flap here. So, hey, even for 200 bucks, they're nice jackets. Um, especially if, you know, you're you're looking at the Sitka and thinking, well, that's, you know, pretty cost prohibitive. Uh, the, uh, the only issue now would be, you know, how is the waterproofing? How is the windproofing? Um, outside in minus six, it was pretty warm. Like I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm in just a t-shirt and it is pretty warm. Uh, so, uh, I will definitely have to try this a little bit more in the cold weather. Um, I will be bringing it on uh, hunts next year. Uh, bottom line is, um, yeah, for a fraction of the cost, it seems like a really well-made, nice, warm jacket. Um, again, 
I'll have to do some long-term testing, but you know, first impressions uh, for the price. I, I know I have some other, you know, hundred, two hundred dollar uh, gear that I started with, and uh, it was it, it was all right. It was good, but again, I had to layer like crazy to make up for the lack of uh, warmth that it had. So, um, and it and it wasn't you know Gore-Tex style fabric. It was just regular regular stuff. So the wind got through it. Um, it wasn't waterproof. It was decent. It had like, you know, they, you sit there for a bit, the snow starts to melt and you're not too bad, but eventually it starts to soak through. This I'll have to try out. So, um, again, take all this with a grain of salt, guys. Um, but first impressions, uh, coming from an owner of legit Sitka stuff, um, it's not 100% on par. It's, uh, you know, they, they obviously, you know, had to keep costs down for certain things but it's it's pretty good stuff so um yeah uh, like i said i have a a few other pieces i'm going to be doing some videos on that um again it's uh first impressions um i'm looking forward to trying out some of this stuff uh in the field um that way i can get uh more of a uh, you know real world uh review for you guys so um yeah i guess on on that note we'll uh wrap it up hope you're enjoying your time outside and uh yeah i'll uh, catch you on the next one